Are you a smart car? Yes. Are you actually smart? No. Dad, look! Someone accidentally went into a highway on-ramp with his moped car. 2004 Smart for Two. The term car can be categorized in three ways. First, there's the car. Something to move you from point A to point B. The basic principles for a car are simple. It's relatively cheap, it works and it does what it's supposed to in a well-established fashion. And these are your Honda Jazzes, your Toyota Corollas and so on. There are millions of combinations of makes and models and engine sizes and you'll choose yours according to the number of your children and the amount of your weekly dog food needs. Second, there's the sports car. Something that theoretically can get you from point A to point B, but it doesn't have to be good at it. You may not want to do your everyday commuting with this machine, but what it must do is be able to give you goosebumps. Camaros to MR2s to 205 GDIs, you'll eventually find something that fits you if you're into this sort of thing. But in third, there's the flying car. And this is a tricky one, because it must be able to do most of the things a normal car does, but it can have an F here and there in its diploma. That's because it's supposed to change the game, or at least a part of it, and be the benchmark for the future of a normal car. I'm calling it a flying car because that's what in the 60s we thought it would do in 2018. It's pretty obvious what the flying car for the millennials is. Yep, it's the brainchild of our hero and savior, the one they call Elon Musk. But oh no, Musk is not the first to create a flying car phenomenon. People and manufacturers have made flying cars for decades. They used to be your AMC Pacers that would put every American in a seat of a small Econo box. And failed. Or your Reliant Robins that would change the number of tires needed forevermore, but it didn't. But in the late 19s we were introduced to a smart... The way of the future, the flying car to solve all of our motoring problems. Now and forever. The decision. Hello kids, it's time for the inaccurate history lesson. The story of a smart started when a Swiss watch manufacturer called Swatch connected their dial-in modem, opened their Netscape and asked Jeeves Who makes nice cars in Europe? After a minute or so waiting, they got their 20 kilobytes of information they were looking for. Let us go to Stuttgart and join forces with the one they call Dandes Dance. Let us build a futuristic automobile. And so they did. They took the first choo-choo train to Stuttgart, had a nice bratwurst for lunch, and in no time were finished designing a futuristic car to change the way we see personal transportation. Hmm, the name. Let's see, is Swatch Mercedes, s and uh, no, 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 s and keeps me bad memories of my ex-wife, but in Hilda. Swatch Mercedes, art car? Yes, smart car. That was actually a Russian accent, but I cannot do... German anyway, accent. you know what? The task wasn't easy even for Daimler-Benz. In the early stages of the project, the Swiss watch manufacturer looked at his futuristic Swatch watch and said, I'm wasting my time, now I will go back to Switzerland. Toodaloo! That's really bad, I don't... This left Benz with a template for a flying car, lots of wasted money and no quirky Swiss watch designer to come up with quirks and features in a way only a Swiss watch manufacturer or Dr. Muro can do. And after many sleepless nights in Stuttgart, the decision to follow through with the project was made. Daimler Corporation dedicated a whole new division for building the smart car. And so came the year of 1998. And as we watched the Finnish hockey team lose the finals to our beloved western neighbors whilst listening to Backstreet Boys, we also saw the rollout of a vehicle that sort of could have changed the way we think about cars, except it didn't. And six years after the initial launch, the car gods blessed us with this low mileage 2004 example you see before you now. Okay. Alright. How do I start the car? So, first you need to be in neutral, which you are, and then you just turn the key. Turn the key. A lot of beeping going on? Yeah, and then you, if you see the lock, you you should uh, press the uh, lock button from this. Okay. Because if the doors are open for too long, sometimes. <laughs> now. Nope. German engineering. Yep, made in France. Now you're good to go. There we go. And then I go. Back for reverse. Now I'm in first gear. This one off. And. And this is basically a manual. 
but with the uh, robot handling it. So I remember driving this when I was 18 and I was so amazed by the um, semi-automatic racing gearbox it has. <laughs> yeah, but, it's uh, basically whoa. the same that the uh, 2018 McLaren car. So I have, if I want to switch up, I have to switch myself, right? Yeah, yeah. And if you stop at the lights or uh, junction, uh, it goes to first gear automatically when you stop. But uh, upwards and downwards in traffic, you need to do it yourself. So how much horsepower do we have? Uh, 898. 898. At the wheels. At the wheels. At the moment, uh, with uh, three bar boost. Okay, I see. Trans so you said if I stop, it'll change automatically back to... Yeah, you will see it uh, in the... Do you have to lift when I change no, gears? No, 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 no. Okay. And uh, a tip when you are downshifting, you can also flip the throttle like in a manual. Because if you don't, the clutch will come down and oh, you will okay. go... It feels, it feels weird. It's a very instant um, steering response. Yeah, and actually I like the steering response because there's no power steering, there's nothing but drag and pinion and... Uh, really, really small wheels, as you might have seen. So we're going 100 kilometers per hour, fourth gear, up the hill. Yeah. Into fifth. <laughs> Pedal to the metal, and we're not going anywhere. It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't want to go up hills. That's what it. Back to fourth, then. It feels like I'm having a, a lawnmower or something in the back. You know, it's making the. Yeah, it's making the. the same kind of very... Yeah, the three-cylinder racket. Oh, yeah, I see. So what's the fastest this car can go, can go anyway? Like uh, I've gone uh, like 135 kilometers an hour, but that was downhill. Right. But the thing about this and the uh, twisties is that it won't roll over, but you're never quite sure if it, <laughs> if it will. It's, it's kind of scary to try it out for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Because you have no idea when it breaks or when you lose the control of the car. You don't want to go over that threshold because no. the next thing isn't oversteer or understeer, it's roll over. I think our, we've lost our camera, guys, so I think this car is quite fast in some sense. <laughs> yeah. but the funny thing Decent is, it, it feels like I'm in the wrong gear all the time. Like, yeah, like basically you are. It's it. It's telling me to shift up, but then I feel like I lose power when I, uh, when I do it. In technical point of view, you basically are in the wrong gear the yeah. whole time because the boost range is such a small area in your rev range. That's uh, that's why the gearing is so short. Yeah, this is something that uh, people usually when they drive it the first time they like it more than they yeah, thought I'm, they would. I'm, I'm positively surprised. That's yeah. the thing I would say. Do you have any idea how much? Um, what's the fuel mileage in this thing? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty low. I think it's around uh, three to four liters per right. hundred kilometers if you drive it like a but Christian we, motorist. But okay. uh, but if we drive it, how much? We, we drive it. It would be like eight. All right. Okay. No, but to be honest, like now that I'm, I'm driving it a little bit, it feels you wouldn't expect like from a car with such a, such a short uh, wheelbase. It's kind of very like I said, the steering feel is, is there. Yeah, definitely. It, it seems very stable, even though it has a has a high point of. Um, Gravity, I should say. Camera car is here. <laughs> we found the camera we found car. The camera car. Yeah, it's it, uh, the fun wears down pretty quickly, but yeah. but it's like rarely like cars give you such a weird sensation, but this yeah. gives you a sensation in in some way at least. It's it's of course you can't compare it to I don't know a 911 or something, but it's it's something different for sure. It's just like. I don't know if, if you've ever played my Finnish summer car, but I feel like I'm, ex I'm in the game right now. Yeah, I, I've watched Robas play it a lot. Shout out to Robas if you ever see this video. Okay, so turn it off and then... Yeah. Before the millennium, the smart project seemed like a complete flop. Neither the shape or the driving experience wasn't funky enough for it to be a game changer. Neither was it conservative enough to attract the normal Merc customer base. But for one reason or another, Mercedes believed in this little car. Or, alternatively, Mercedes were holding their 7s and 2s with so much money put in the pot that they didn't want to admit to themselves that it was time to fold. For a while it's actually quite fun going through the gears and swinging back and forth like you're waiting for a cab at 5am after a night of clubbing. But the fun wears down as quick as your engine oil will. No tram plug either. If you want to ease your oil changes, you'll 
just have to sort it out yourself. Flying flying that was a bird. <laughs> While it would be fun, or at least amusing to watch, to totally destroy this car and do a double barrel roll ending up ass up in the ditch, we come to what is possibly the strangest point of a smart. They're worth money. And not play money, real money. 2004 model, well maintained. The asking price could still hover around 3000 euro mark. This of course isn't comparable with other European or American markets because of the unique way that Scandinavians pay car related taxes. But you get the point. Here in Finland, a comparable car, a Toyota Yaris, would be half the price. And if you're into cars, your cheapest sports car from roughly the same era isn't far off either. And the price isn't the only futuristic the flying, flying car, car promise that the smart couldn't keep. In fact, the only promise it could keep was about its size. Otherwise, affordability? Mm, no. Funky futuristic looks? Mm, that's debatable, but no. Gas mileage? Well, kind of yeah, but not really. I mean, small cars with tiny engines use less fuel. Nothing groundbreaking here. And then the big tick box that was already applied to the flying car application sheet by the time the Smart for 2 was released. Sustainability? A big fat no. no. After all, this is a plastic, hard to maintain machine without an oil drain plug. It is meant to be used and abused and when you're done with it, you're supposed to throw it in the bin with the rest of your early 2000s Nissan Micros. From my naive point of view, that's a missed opportunity from Mercedes part. I mean, the early 2000s were becoming the golden age for charging 300 euros for a vacuum cleaner that had a green leaf sticker with the word ECO printed on it. Or selling a 6.5 liter Escalade with a 0.5 kilowatt electric motor in the back and calling it a hybrid. Or selling Cameron Diaz a Prius and having her tell about it everywhere she went. But that apparently wasn't the Smart Division's marketing plan. There's no green stickers, no butterflies, no Cameron Diaz or Leo DiCaprio in sight. And the amazing thing is, it worked. After the first years of not moving enough units, the smart project slowly started to earn its wings. Get it? The flying car earning its, earn its wings? Car. <laughs> Man, am I funny. The sales numbers went up. People in crowded European cities with narrow streets started flocking around smart dealerships and the company was even able to introduce new models as well as update their existing for two platform. Cabrios, roadsters and even bigger smarts were introduced. And as a brand, smart is still going strong. Hell, you can even buy a Brabus tuned sports model nowadays. But you know what has happened along the way? Flying car for the late 90s and the early 2000s, idealistically dreamed up by a funky Swiss watch manufacturer and some engineers from Stuttgart, had become nothing else but a Toyota Yaris. The Smart for 2 is, despite its somewhat funky looks, a car. Not a flying car, just a car. car.